It may sound a little strange, why ban something at war and still kill people, but no matter what your principles are, the modern war does indeed have its rules. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the nastiest, most horrible instruments of death and suffering that you won't see on today's battlefield. A good number may surprise you, and some may leave you scratching your head. So let's get right into it. Number 1. Mustard Gas The terror of World War I trenches, mustard gas comes from its yellow-brown color and its odor. Apparently, it is similar to horseradish, but there is nothing delicious about it. Since it's heavier than air, mustard gas proved terribly effective in clearing trenches and was a bad boy single-handedly responsible for the 1928 Geneva Convention. When you inhale it, the gas causes your lungs to fill with fluid, drowning you in your own juices. When soldiers were hit with a bomb filled with mustard gas, they were told to pee into their handkerchiefs and breathe through those until they could escape or the gas dissipated. Number 2. Tear Gas Sounds alarming, but the tear gas the police routinely shoot into crowds is technically banned for use in war. Even though it's basically non-lethal, tear gas is still an inhalant chemical weapon that obstructs breathing, putting it in the same legal class as mustard gas. Number 3. Plastic Landmines It appears that militaries are no longer allowed to set up landmines that can't be detected by x-ray. According to protocol, one of the conventions of certain conventional weapons, tall weapons must use metallic fragments that can be seen with an x-ray. Also, mines placed outside of fenced areas must also have a self-destruct mechanism to go off after a while. There is also an ongoing campaign to ban all the landmines internationally through the Ottawa Treaty. However, it has not yet passed. China, Russia, and the United States didn't sign it yet for some reason. Number four, dirty bombs. It's not exactly a paper bag full of dog feces. A dirty bomb is filled with radioactive material Although it's forbidden under international law, most countries don't bother with them anyway. A dirty bomb irradiates an area and makes it uninhabitable. So what's the point if the winner of the war can't go there either? That aside, the amount of radioactive material needed to make a dirty bomb effective could easily be used to build a full-on nuclear bomb, so why even bother? Number 5. Salted Bombs Salted bombs are like dirty bombs but are accurate nuclear weapons explicitly created for shorter term area denial. A salted nuke contains an isotope of cobalt, gold, zinc, or sodium. During a nuclear blast, these elements become a massive cloud of fallout. These weapons are the same type used in the Soviet doomsday device from Dr. Strange Love, a great movie if you haven't watched it yet. Small 1 kiloton salted nuke can be used tactically. The radioactive fallout may decay in a year or two, thus denying large swath of land to enemy forces for a time. But since radiation is invisible, these weapons are generally prohibited because of their potential lethality to civilians. Incendiary weapons. These are the weapons designed to burn or set fire to large areas. Luckily or unfortunately, they are extremely dangerous for civilians and are also banned. This prohibits actual flame, heat, or chemical reactions, limiting the use of flamethrowers, napalm, and white phosphorus. Feel free to use a flamethrower, but not near civilians, which might be a tall order on today's battlefield. Napalm isn't banned as a weapon, but you can only use it in a concentrated area where the enemy uses foliage as concealment. Blinding laser beams. Sounds like a Star Wars scene that never happened. Well, it's been around for about 40 years already, but blinding laser beams don't refer to the laser dazzlers that police and special ops use. Low-powered beams aren't designed to cause permanent blindness. This ban refers to lasers that are powerful enough to cause permanent blindness. Microwave lasers. Limitation. Yes, laser cannons are real, and they've been around for some time now. Today, the Air Force use mighty laser cannons mounted to aircrafts and battleships. They use it to shoot down incoming missiles from 250 miles away. Hypothetically, you can mount it to tanks and use it to burn down human targets on the ground. That's a movie I'd watch. Luck such use of directed energy weapons is currently forbidden, mainly because too low of a dose from a huge distance might not kill the target so much as cooking its eyes, which is, as we remember, a violation of the ban against blinding lasers. 
So basically, you can kill with a laser, but cannot blind. Seems fair. Expanding Ordnance. Technically, this means bullets which expand or flatten easily in the human body. They were developed by the British in India in 1899. However, the delegates to the St. Petersburg Declaration of 1868 wanted to limit warfare to only the combatants. If these bullets were deadlier, there would be less suffering. Why even use them if regular ones are much deadlier? Today, this covers hollow point bullets designed to remain in the body and limit collateral damage. Poison bullets. It was the earliest known arm agreement when the Holy Roman Empire and France agreed not to use poison bullets on each other. At the time, troops stored shells in unclean places like corpses. It would be another 100 plus years before people found out about germ spreading diseases and the infections caused by these bullets became a severe hazard to injured troops. Cluster bombs. A cluster bomb releases several projectiles on impact to injure or damage troops and vehicles. The 2008 convention on cluster munition banned these for two reasons. First, they have a broad area effect and cannot distinguish between civilians and soldiers. Second, cluster munition leaves behind a lot of dangerous unexploded ordnance. Locusts, fleas, and rats. Jokes aside, it's been done and has a devastating effect. For example, some theorize that the Black Plague resulted from a lingering bioterror attack from Asia. Today, using animals carrying diseases in a war would be completely illegal. Bat bombs. Before you ask, it's not a secret Chinese weapon to cause COVID-19. It's American secret weapon designed to decimate Japanese cities during the Second World War. Most of Japan's cities were made of wood and paper during World War II. The concept was releasing a bomb filled with sleeping bats, you heard it right, real bats captured from caves in New Mexico. After release, the bats would disperse and roost under the eaves of the Japanese homes up to 40 miles away. The project was codenamed X-Ray and tested in 1944, but the war effectively ended after the nuclear bombs. Sounds bizarre, but the testing showed these unusual weapons to be tremendously effective, some say even more so than the A-bomb. Today, bat bombs are prohibited under Protocol 3 of the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. Spike Pits these old-fashioned death traps are technically prohibited by Protocol 3 of the 1979 Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. Pits with sharpened bamboo spikes injured and killed thousands of soldiers in Vietnam and the Pacific during World War II. Adding insult to injury, the Viet Cong and Japanese rolled those spikes in human or animal feces first, causing secondary infections after even the most minor scratch. Fire Balloon During 1898, it was banned to drop bombs from balloons. However, the practice survived well into World War II. A family in Oregon, including a pregnant woman and her five children, were killed by one of these balloons while picnicking. The weapon itself is basically useless as there isn't enough impact on setting the bombs off as they drift from the balloons. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this playlist right here and we'll see you next time.